friends, it's Megan, Georgia Girl Stitching here on YouTube and on Instagram. It is Tuesday, December 5th, and I'm back for another video. I first wanna say thank you to everyone who pressed play today, whether you're brand new or you've been with me for a while. I really appreciate you coming back today. It is a crazy month for everyone, and especially with FlossTube, um, so I really appreciate you checking me out today. Um, I have a lot to share. So this is gonna be kind of a big video. Sorry, there's like something in the air. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be kind of a big video. I, this month is also very busy for me between interviews and we're doing a lot of traveling and like just a lot going on. David getting ready to move next month. So this is like one day that I have to like just film. I don't have anything else going on today. So I'm gonna do kind of my normal floss tube at the beginning because I have a lot to share with you. And then the second half, I'm gonna do my whip parade and kind of just get it out there and for everyone to enjoy, you know, whenever they have the time this month. So that's kind of what we have. I, I have to like to kind of figure out where to start, but I first and foremost wanna thank uh, Pam and staff from Just Keep Stitching for doing a really sweet shout out to me a couple days ago, I really, really appreciate it. I miss you guys so much and um, and just wanna say thank you. So if you're from them, you know, thank you for trusting their recommendation and coming by. I also, um, if you have heard of anyone else that has shouted me out, please let me know. I definitely want to, you know, thank them properly. That was the only notification I've gotten since my last video that I've like been tagged. So if you know of anyone else who has mentioned to me, please let me know. Um, excuse me. So since my last video, which really wasn't that long ago, but a lot has happened, <laughs> uh, right before David and I were on here right before Thanksgiving and we, um, I hope everyone in the United States who celebrates Thanksgiving had a wonderful weekend spent however you choose to celebrate that, whether it's with family or with friends, we did a kind of solo trip with, we have a big family trip that we're doing for Christmas this year. Uh, David's mom, my parents, and the two of us are, and all the dogs are going to the Keys for Christmas for a week. So because of that, trying to like coordinate, you know, Thanksgiving with work and everything was going to be a little too much this year. So we kind of did our last solo trip for a long time um, over Thanksgiving and we went to Ocean City, Maryland. We had never been there before. It's within David's leave radius. So we uh, kind of just did a little spontaneous adventure up there, took the dogs, um, stayed at a hotel that was on the, on the water. It was like just past the boardwalk, if you've been there before. And we had an amazing time. The weather was gorgeous. The water was gorgeous. The sunsets and sunrises were gorgeous. The dogs had a blast. Um, off season dogs are allowed on the beach. So we were able to walk them up and down the beach, uh, amazing restaurants, and it wasn't very busy. We had one family of like, I swear there must've been like 70 of them that like took over our hotel. It was like the big family reunion for Thanksgiving. We overheard them say that they've been coming to Ocean City since like 1989 or something um, for Thanksgiving. So it was kind of funny to like, they, that was like the only busy part of Ocean City happened to be like our hotel. <laughs> um, but it was fun seeing them and, you know, the kids all playing and coloring and it was just, it was fun. Um, but yeah, but we had a very relaxing weekend and enjoyed a lot of good food. We did drive up to Delaware because Ocean City's not that far. We went and kind of discovered uh, Bethany Beach and walked around the cute little town of Bethany Beach. Um, and then we did go to a winery in Delta in Delaware. Um, we really loved Salty Vines. Big fan. They had um, gorgeous setup and the wines are really good and just really friendly people and also seem to have a lot of events going on. So if you're into wine and events, check out Salty, Salty Vines. Um, so we did that and then we came back. Um, we watched football and had a great, you know, great Thanksgiving dinner um, out. And then we came back and kind of got back to it. I have been interviewing almost, it feels like almost every day. <laughs> um, it's been, it was four last, four days last week, three days this week, three days next week, two days the following week. And then I have one in January. So it's been a lot, um, all good things, all good things. But, and then my parents came up last weekend, which was a ton of fun. They um, they came up, so UGA, which I'm only gonna talk about briefly to try not to cry. 
UGA was in the SEC championship on Saturday, and since Alabama is our kryptonite, it appears, it's our one loss in like three years or something ridiculous. Um, we beat ourselves, basically. So they came up for that. We have great friends in Williamsburg who also love football. So we had like a Williamsburg day and then finished with football um, and then spent Sunday back on this side of the water. And we had a great day, a great, great weekend in general. It was really great. So they left yesterday. Um, when I was in Ocean City, we did go to Salty Yarns. So I have some haul from there. And then this past weekend, really exciting, um, Williamsburg had their grand opening of their needle workshop. So there's a brand new needle workshop in Williamsburg, Virginia, Liberty Hill Needleworks. And that was an incredible experience as well. So I'll talk about that too. But so mom and I did that while the guys kind of hung out with the dogs, um, but then we then took them back on Sunday. So <laughs> they got to see it too. Um, and yeah, it's just been a lot of bopping around, uh, seeing people and having fun. It's been great. Um, Kind of on the more business side, I failed to mention in my last video, uh, but I actually have opened an Etsy shop now. So I still have my Gumroad, but there was enough interest that I did go ahead and open up an Etsy shop. The things in my Etsy shop though are only patterns that I have stitched the model for and I consider like finalized patterns. So things that I have officially stitched, I've confirmed the symbols and the DMC floss and like things that like I would say are like ready for print basically um, are in my Etsy shop. Everything else, my conversions, my kind of like draft patterns where I haven't fully finished yet, but I feel really good like that the pattern is finalized, but just not the cover photo. Um, that is all still in my gum road. So if you're looking for like Kind Fear Spray, for example. I have not finished stitching that yet. So that's on my gum road. And then once I finish stitching it and finalize the cover and, fo and footer pages, that will then be in my Etsy. So my Etsy is just Georgia Girl Stitching. Um, I will link it down below if you're interested or if you feel more comfortable with Etsy. It is still only PDF. I have not, I still haven't jumped into, you know, printed patterns yet. So it's still just PDF downloads. Um, but yeah, but if you're interested in that, the link is down below for both my Gumroad and my Etsy. Um, other kind of businessy thing, I still do have quite a few fabrics left on my D-Stash Instagram page, Georgia Girl D-Stash, um, which I have listed down below. If you're looking for some fabrics, I still have some color and cotton um, and some kind of random ones that um, are gorgeous fabrics. I just don't see myself stitching on them anytime in the near future. So kind of passing the stash in a way. Um, it's one of the ones is still from the color fabric of the month club from last month. So if you're interested in that, you know, check it out. I plan, I need to change the listing. I think it says ship by December 1st. So at this point it would be ship by January 1st. Um, if you like order, you know, if you buy within the next, uh, few weeks at the, and then I'll keep changing that, you know, as we go down. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about that, feel free to let me know. I think that is most of it um, of like the words and now I can start showing things. So first and foremost, I got one of the most amazing gifts in the mail that I had put in a very special place on display and then David distracted me and I didn't show on my last video, but it is in a very, in a place of honor in my home right now. and cried ugly tears when it arrived. <laughs> um, I didn't know it was really, I didn't know it was coming. And I got this, this is the card and it is a black hat with his little ear chopped like 310, the keepsakes cat. And inside, dear Megan, Jen and I started this when you moved from Cincinnati to start medical school. We hope to give it you to stitch away, but as soon as we saw Pam from Just Keep Stitching doing a sal, we knew we had to get it to you ASAP before you bought it and stitched it. And they stitched it on 28 count color and cotton shiplap. And they were exactly correct. That's how well they know me. I, when Pam showed this start in one of her videos, I had it favorited in all my one, two, three stitch wish list that I definitely was going to buy and stitch. So Jen and Lenny from Keepsakes. So they would they would have started this in 2020, which is when I left Cincinnati for um, for medical school. 
they must start started this then and they were going to give it to me. I'm going to stitch away in January, but they went ahead to send it along because they know me so well. Oh, the ugly tears that cried. This is what they sent me. Um, the name of the pattern is escaping me, but I will have it listed down below. Um, the two of them stitched it. I don't know like who stitched what, but it doesn't matter. It is incredible. It is me and it, the words. There are good ships and wood ships and ships that sail the sea, but the best ships are friendships. May they always be. So just amazing. And they, and I assume Barbara from Keepsakes finished it and it was like on this wooden box. It doesn't open, um, but it's great to like display. Um, so we'll never be able to thank them enough, but I'm going to squeeze them extremely tight in January when I see them. Um, and try not to cry, even though Lenny and I always cry when we see each other. Um, so yeah, so I had to share this. And um, if you're working on this, the, from Pam, who started this, this is an idea of what it will look like. So I'll bring it in closer. It's just amazing. And it's on 28 count color and cotton shiplap, appropriately named. So. so thank you so much, Jen and Lenny. I will never be able to thank you enough for your fun trip. Um, and then I can kind of go into my haul real quick about the two needlework shops that I, it's a small amount, but I want to share just how amazing these shops are. So David and I both went to Salty Yarns because David, um, is crocheting and half of the, well, I don't even want to say half, maybe a third of the store is yarn, gorgeous yarn. And then like two thirds of the store is cross stitching. And, and a little bit of needlework. Like she has some painted canvases in the back for, for needlework. Um, amazing. I was a little, I was overwhelmed when I walked in actually, just cause it's, it, from the front, it is not, it doesn't look like it's very much. Um, it's in this kind of like side little, um, like sh uh, outdoor mall kind of thing and strip mall. And so from the front, it doesn't look like it's that big, but it goes deep. It is very deep. <laughs> so walking in, I was amazed. I was like, oh, we won't be here very long. It looks pretty small. And we were there over an hour <laughs> easily. So tons of shop models. It's very nautical beach themed since it's, you know, 10 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean. So it was very um, nautical beach themed, which is right in my alley. The woman who was working there was very nice. You asked if you needed anything. And cut my fabric for me very, you know, nicely and stuff. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, I did get a project kitted up while I was there. The fabric selection was incredible as well. Um, I didn't get any pictures actually inside the shop. I failed there. Um, but it was very nicely, uh, done. And so what I got as like kind of my memento that I kitted up a project while I was there. I had seen this before, but she had a shop model of it and fell in love. The shop model sold it basically. Um, and that is Quaker blue whale. She had, I think she only had the blue, uh, model. I can't remember if she had the pink model, but she had it on fabric that almost looked exactly like that. And it was just so pretty. Even David loved, you know, saw it and loved it. And I love Quakers and it's just, and we love whales, you know, so it was really pretty. So I grabbed that and then I went to her fabric selection and she had quite an array, but the one I picked out, which I've never stitched on this designer before and I'm really excited. She had quite a nice selection of Bestitch Me fabrics, which I just haven't had an opportunity to, to kind of get my hands on. Um, so I'm really excited. I got Be Stitch Me 40 Count Morning Fog. Oh, it's so pretty. It's such a pretty fabric. It's like just this very nice, like blue, green, gray fabric. And I got um, 1 8th fabric. It will fit pretty much perfectly. I need exactly 1 8th fabric. <laughs> So that's what I'll be stitching it on. And then the floss I'm going to use is Gentle Art. Um, sorry. Gentle Art Deep Sea. Oh, so pretty. So it'll be. It's 
it's not a floss tube of mine if I don't drop something. So that'll be the combination. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm so excited. One thing I did not realize, so the Quaker on the whale is negative space. So when I pulled out the pattern, it's actually negative space where it's supposed to look like it's like coming, like the fabric showing through. I'm considering still stitching that in white. Um, I haven't quite decided. I'll kind of decide as I get further along, but I'm considering doing the Quaker parts actually in white to make them stand out a little bit more. This fabric's a little bit like darker and more modeled than the, or not more modeled, but the less modeled than the uh, picture. So I don't know how well, like I kind of want the, I thought the Quakers were white and I liked that. And then when I realized it wasn't, I think I might still do that. So we'll see. I don't have any specific plans for when I'm going to start this. Probably soon, if I had to guess. But, oh, it's just so pretty. And I love this color, this deep sea, this like dark teal to navy. So, so yeah, so that's what I bought at Salty Yarns. I'll go this direction. Quite a full table over here. Um, and then at Liberty Hill Needleworks, oh my goodness. So it is run by Susan McKenzie is the owner and her husband is very involved and, uh, he was there helping with everything. He was very nice. And then the other employee that was there that I saw was actually Kristen, who is cow stitcher here on floss tube. And it was so fun. She, she and I have never met in person. I actually forgot or didn't realize from her videos that like she lives around here. Um, that just never clicked to me. So when I saw her Instagram that she was one, like promoting the needle workshop, I was like, wait, you live here. <laughs> I didn't know you lived around here. So she, um, so mom and I decided to go in the morning, Saturday morning, or like shortly after they opened and you walk in and it's another one of those things like from the front, it looks very unassuming. But when you first walk in their main, they have like a wall that you then that can like go around to the rest of the shop. So the front wall when you walk in is all Williamsburg specific things. And I'm we're obs like obsessed with Williamsburg. Like we just we just love Williamsburg. And I've grown up loving Williamsburg. I almost went to college of William America College. Like just love Williamsburg. So it's all very specific Williamsburg patterns, which I'd never seen before. Didn't even know was an option. Um, and she had models of them. So pretty like specific uh, buildings in Williamsburg like they should one for the Capitol the governor's palace the taverns like it was very cool and then like Virginia specific patterns as well so that was amazing so we, we couldn't even get through the lobby basically um we mom and I were stuck there for a few minutes and then Kristen came up and introduced herself and like didn't even well I shouldn't even say that she walked up and we like had that classic girl like oh my goodness you know and hugged each other and it's like I feel like I know you even though I've never met you <laughs> um so it was a lot of fun kind of talking with Kristen for a few minutes. And then we finally like got around the wall. Um, they have an entire wall of imaginating kits. Like, again, some that I've never seen. Um, Star Wars, like very um, like classic things. And then they have, she has just a wall of floss. Like dinky dyes, classic color works, weak style works, DMC just gentle arts, just an entire wall of color. And it is so gorgeous just to like see the floss all laid out in one place, you know? Um, and then she has like half a wall of all the fabric. She has them like on hangers on in different levels that's organized by count. So and it's like clear bags that you can like see through it. So that was cool. You know, just like all this fabric. Um, and she also had a few, she has a few fabric trunk shows right now as well. Um, and then just patterns galore and project bags, needle minders. Like she just has it all. And it's, it's just really well laid out. It's a very open concept, but she fit a lot of stuff in there, but you don't feel like it's crowded. Um, so yeah, so there's a nice, really nice table that they're going to have like where stitchers can come. You're not just stitchers, crafters can come craft. She's very open. Like you do not have to stitch to come hang out. You can do anything. Um, so like David could bring his crochet while I stitch. So very keepsakes like in that way. Um, and Susan is a hoot. She is so sweet and just very energetic. And she and I had a lot of fun, like talking and kind of getting to know each other a little bit, um, along with mom and, um, it was a lot of fun. So 
what I bought there. Oh, this is, I just wanted to show, this is their, uh, her card and that's their logo. Liberty Hill Needlework, Stitching Happiness in Williamsburg. And then this is all the information of the shop. So if you're interested, or if you're gonna be passing through town, it's definitely worth stopping in. Um, I mean, they had designers I'd never heard of. They had charts I'd never seen before. Like the stock inventory was incredible, the variety. Um, this is their website, a QR code to their website. It's not, um, it's not fully active yet, but if you go to her, I think it's on her Facebook page. Um, there's somewhere you can put in your email address and get and sign up for their newsletter and they'll let you know when things are like activated and stuff. Um, so what I bought too, they were giving away free needle minders. So that was the needle minder. Um, it's gorgeous, like sparkly snowflake. So what I bought there was first and foremost, I saw this needle minder and had to get it. This gorgeous bejeweled palm tree. Love it so much from, um, accoutrement designs i love her i love her needle miners i have a lot of her needle miners <laughs> they're not cheap but they're so worth it <laughs> um it's such thick magnets like this picks up my there was one time i pulled out one of these for my project and it had my needle my scissors and my floss ring all attached to it when i pulled it out like it's very strong and then i got the pattern i got was this gorgeous i'd never seen this before Sweet Wing Studio, Forever in Peace. This is very patriotic, but like nice designed flag. Um, that was just very pretty. Forever in Peace, may you wave. Um, and then got this fabric, which I don't have a specific plan for. I just thought it was really pretty. And it's, it's a 46 count that did not have stark white modeling. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Um, and this was from her, one of her trunk shows, show her little stickers. This was, uh, 46 count cross stitch Earl Grey from, um, sorry, Grace Notes from Grace Notes. So she has a Grace Notes, um, trunk show right now. And this is the fabric. Very kind of very similar to the morning fog, but darker. Um, and that, that white that's on the, is not that white. It's blowing it out a little bit um but it's a very it's just it's a little it's lighter but it's not white and it's 46 count so I'm trying to increase my it's really it's not that harsh I think the light I don't know how to do that the light is definitely blowing it out um yeah it's just really pretty really love it earl gray um nice gray dark blue gray um that's a little better, but still not quite right. But you get the idea. It's great. So don't know what I'm going to do this for, but I, I think white would show up well on it. And I think a lot of, I think most colors would show up well on it. So I'm excited about that. And then the only other thing I got was a couple of floss colors. Cause I want to start, um, next year. I didn't bring the pattern out, but it is the, uh, talk to me goose from top gun pattern. Um, I'll show it when I actually start it, but I'm trying to find some good blues to, I don't know what fabric I'm going to do it on, but I'm trying to like come up with some good blues and this wall of floss, I was able to see blues very easily. So these are the two options I got for right now. Um, Midnight, which I love from Shake Simpler, from Gentle Art, uh, Midnight, and then Weeks Dye Works Navy, which I kind of feel like if I'm going to do a Top Gun, I should just do it in Navy. <laughs> that seems to be kind of get an idea there so yeah so I just really love um those colors so I grab those and if I don't use them for that pattern I will find a use for them me and blue so yeah so that's what I got from there um I actually got one more thing but it'll be a giveaway at the end of the video and then yeah that's kind of so that was my haul I'll be going back a lot uh it's only 35 minutes from our apartment right now and if all things go according to plan, hopefully I'll be living in Williamsburg. So just very exciting. Um, really, really just so happy to have that store. And I, I do, <clears throat> excuse me, I do technically have dying to stitch, you know, near, nearby, but not that close. And it's, it's a kind of a pain in the butt to get there, to be honest, from where I am compared to where they are. I have to go through multiple tunnels and bridges and traffic and it's, 
like if you look online how long it takes it takes much longer than that so it's not really that feasible i've been here a year and a half and i just have not been able to get over there very often versus williamsburg it's a straight shot one road there in 30 minutes no matter what like we've never had issues traffic anything so and we go we have friends in williamsburg so we go up there quite often like our closest friends live in williamsburg right now so you know that live around us um they are so we're up there every other weekend it feels like so i'm just really excited to have a needle workshop even more uh coincidental the needle workshop is half a mile from our friend's house so when i was first saw that there was going to be a williamsburg needle workshop i was like we were on our way to go visit them and i was like let's just veer off let's just go see where it's going to be it hadn't opened yet of course and i was like i just want to know i just want to know where this is going to be and i like so david had the gps to their friend's house because we always do that just in case and then I pulled up the, like on my phone, the GPS needle workshop and they were lined up. Like only at the very last turn was there a change in the directions. And it's like, we had to go past their neighborhood, past their neighborhood and like less than a mile, there was the needle workshop. And I was like, okay. And Dave was like, great, this is gonna be expensive. <laughs> like when we're this close, I could almost walk there from their house. Like. It's amazing. So I'm very excited about that. Um, much more convenient. And yeah, and Susan and Kristen, like just great people. So highly recommend making the effort to get there if it's feasible for you. Um, and there's a lot of exciting opportunities. We'll see, you know, she's just getting started. So who knows, you know, what will come out of that. Okay, so now I have two other pieces of haul that are digital. Um, last week, when, when did it happen? A couple weeks ago. The Cross Stitch Studio, which is a full coverage, um, a full coverage place, a shop, online shop, um, was having a sale. And there were two patterns that I have been in love with for a long time. And I bit the bullet and I bought them. And I never say never, right? Because I've always said, I'll never do Heaven Earth Designs. I'll never do Heaven Earth Designs. It's way too much. It'll take me my lifetime. Well, you never say never. <laughs> So these are the two patterns I got. I got Honeymoon Sunset, the full-sized one. And then I got Dolphins at Play, which is a crop from a much bigger one. So even the Dolphins at Play is ridiculously big, but it's a crop from an even bigger one. So these are the two I got. I don't have any specific plans to start yet. I'm going to need to spend time just kidding it up. Like the fabric I would need for Honeymoon Sunset, I like, I need it. I need, I think I need a yard of fabric. So, and then the DMC, I did, what's kind of cool, Charting, what is the name of the place? Is it Charting Creations? So on, on the Cross Stitch Studio, they have an FA, FAQ and people ask like, where do I get oversized fabric? There is a website that will actually do kits for uh, some of their designs. So there is a, there is a kit I want to do 28 count over one is kind of my is how i'm thinking i'm gonna do full, this full coverage just size wise and coverage wise um i think i'm gonna do the 28 count over one they have a dmc kit where you just get the dmcs you need <laughs> the kit, kit's like over a hundred dollars just in dmcs so yeah it's gonna be some time like it's probably it, it's gonna cost money and need time before i can like officially start that and get it all kitted up but i've at least on step one and got the pattern <laughs> um i think i will start honeymoon sunset first and kind of get that going and as mom and i call it our lifetime projects like one day when i have a craft room i'm just gonna always have it set up and i can just go back and forth to it you know that's not feasible in our current situation but one day um, so yeah, so that's my, um, those are my other two pieces of haul. Absolutely love it. Sorry, I have notes because I just, I'm trying not to forget anything. Um, yeah, so that's, I think officially on my haul. Kind of an update. Uh, David and I did both finish our dinosaur, uh, gifts because that is this weekend. We're leaving on Friday. So we, um, I'm going to insert a picture of the framed cross stitch. My dad was a huge help with that. Dad does like book binding, framing, like dad, dad does this kind of thing a lot. So he came and brought his X-Acto knife and helped me and we, uh, we did it together. So I got it all framed up 
I, I, I did use like sticky board. Um, it was the easiest thing for right now. And I mean, I don't think it's, this isn't some like heirloom thing that's going in the center of the, you know, like it's a very, it's, a, it's going in a kid's room, you know? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm very, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Dad was amazing in helping me with that. So I'm gonna insert a picture of that. And then, um, and then David finished the blanket. So he could not be here today. He actually had to work today and Kaya is at daycare. So Tank and I are holding down the fort today. But I do have the blanket here and I'm gonna show it to you. I don't crochet, I don't know any of the words, but if you have any questions, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to comment and then he will be happy to answer them via me. Um, but I'm gonna stand back. It's amazing, y'all. All right. He worked on it so hard. He got all the dinos like could applique while we were at Ocean City. Okay. Look at this thing. Oh, isn't it amazing? I'm so proud of him. He really stuck with it. It's his first like finished big project. And it's big. Like it's it's a it's a decent size. So he'll Levi will be able to use it for quite a few years. Here, I'll come up closer so you can see it. We've already washed it. We wanted to test it out before we told, you know, so we can give them an idea, new parents, you know, how to wash it, because I'm sure they're going to need to wash it a lot. The T-Rexes are my fave. The Triceratops are really cool, but they were apparently, according to David, they were like a ton of work. <laughs> Not his fave to actually crochet. And then let me bring it up. So I will, um, if you have any questions about this at all, please let me know. And I'll be sure to get you those answers. So, yes. So, and it's so warm. Um, and this kid's getting born. I think he's due end of January, early February. So a warm blanket is definitely needed. And my parents brought a little gift for him too for us to take. It's all dino related. David has a, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he's done it. Has he worn it yet? I think he has. So David, his go-to, he always wears Hawaiian shirts for everything. He's very Tommy Bahama, Hawaiian shirts. You know, he has like different things. Well, so he like, his, his default is he will wear a Hawaiian shirt to anything. And he has a Hawaiian shirt for everything, but we're going, it's like the middle of December and we're going to this baby shower and it's a more like low key baby shower. Like the girls are probably also going to wear dresses, but the guys can wear like nice jeans and whatnot. Um, and he, I was like, so what are you going to like, which Hawaiian shirt are you going to wear? Like at this point, I don't even fight it. You know, <laughs> what Hawaiian shirt are you going to wear? He pulls out. I don't know where this came from. I don't know what this is. It's a red a red shirt that has green dinos all over it. And I'm like, where did you even get this from? Like, and he was like, don't worry about it. So he even has a wine shirt with dinos on it for this kid. He's, he, Levi is basically our first nephew. Like I don't have any siblings and David's sibling, you know, will not be having children most likely. So we're kind of considering this being like our friends' kids are gonna be our nieces and nephews. So I even signed it like Auntie Megan and Uncle Dave, you know. So we're super excited. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then let's see. Yeah, so if you have any questions about either of those, I did change all of the colors. If you watched our last video, you know, I changed all the colors of the uh, cross stitch to kind of match the blanket and kind of go with their theme a little bit more. So I'll link the original down below. And then if you have any questions about colors, you know, let me know. I'd be happy to share my conversion as well. And I just recharted his name. Um, it originally has like all of the um, like length, birthday, time. Well, he hasn't been born yet. So I just charted his full name onto it. So yeah, so I think that's everything that's not whips. I know I haven't shown actually like really integral cross stitch yet of mine um, in person. So that is all of like the floss tube part, uh, normal floss tube. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to reach out. I really appreciate all of, you know, everyone's support and everything. Um, and I hope this 
Flossmas fl holiday season is going well for you. So if that's all you cared about, great. You know, have a great December. I'm gonna jump now into the whip parade. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in kind of reverse chronological order where I'm gonna do my um, newest whips first. So then we're gonna go backwards to my oldest whip. Um, some of these you haven't seen, one or one a couple of these you haven't seen, and hopefully they're not gonna be um, whips for very long is the hope. So, and then at the end, just so we kind of get an idea, so I'm gonna do my whip parade. At the end, I'm gonna talk about my plans and my video plans for the rest of the year and giveaways. So that's kind of what's happening at the end of the video. All right, so I'm gonna switch. I don't need this right now. I'm gonna switch to my whip list. So I'm gonna start with my 2023 starts, whips, whatnot. So these are things I started in 2023. This one, I literally started, uh, you know, recently. This is my most recent start. It's already 54% done, so hopefully it will be a finish before the end of this week. Um, this is one of my new designs, and this is, I haven't quite settled on the name yet, I'll be honest. Right now it's called Healing, but I've not quite set up. If you have any ideas for a name for this pattern, let me know, because I'd love to hear some more ideas. Um, this is the mock-up, and this is where we're at. So I was inspired to do this when I was on my uh, one of my rotations, and there was a lot of this needed, courage, hope, and healing. Um, and so a stethoscope, and then this is the staff of, oh shoot, I meant to look up the pronunciation before I got started. Escalupilis? I know that's not right. Um, this is actually the symbol of medicine. So it's kind of interesting. There's, a, there's always been this kind of debate over what is the true symbol of medicine? Is it this or is it the two snakes that go around? And... A lot of the time it's kind of used interchangeably, but they are different. This is the actual symbol of medicine and healing. The other one is the symbol of Hermes, which is which represents different things. So I, because I actually looked this up when I was trying to design this, to be honest, to decide like what is the true. So when I actually have this chart finished, I'm going to um, have a little blurb in there about like this symbol versus the other one and kind of what they each represent. Um, to be, there's literally a published article on PubMed about this. Like there is evidence-based research on this. So I am quoting, you know, evidence-based research when I quote this. Um, so yes, so that's the symbol. And then all I have left is just the rest of the stethoscope. So there's like the connector, it'll wrap around, have the little bowl, um, bell with a heartbeat backstitched. And what's great about this pattern too, um, if you want to like create this for someone who you love or you know yourself in the medical field, it's really easy to cut. It's really easy to customize it. So my favorite color is blue. My stethoscope is blue. So I did a blue stethoscope. But if your favorite color is purple, you could do two shades of purple um, for the stethoscope. If you know any any color, you could easily customize it. So. So yeah, so I have a lot of, I was, this is on 46 count oat from Zweigart. And it's a lot of fun. I did this very quickly. <laughs> it goes by very quickly. So, and doesn't use very many colors. So that's my most recent start. And then this one, next one is another one of my designs. Um, this is Beach Quaker. That fabric, this fabric is not that neon. It's that's better. It's really not that neon. <laughs> um, so this is one of my my next most recent design that I'm working on. I'm about halfway done on this one. So I'm hoping that this one and the last one will be done this year. And I'm in love with it. Beach Quaker. So I'm working on that next color and then I've got three more colors. I did, as you can see, I had to frog out this whole section down here. So I'm a little behind. Um, but I am loving it. The white's coming through really well how I wanted it to. This is on 40 count wave pool from Color and Cotton. So that's number two. 
this one. Next one is um, an Orcadia kit. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. O-R-C-H-I-D-E-A, or Orchida, Orchida kit. This is on 40 Count Aqua from Zweigart. It's a kit that I got from wizardeye.com. And I'll post that link down below. And this is where I'm at. This is not in Pattern Creeper because I'm working off of a paper chart. So I don't know exactly my percentage. Oh, I guess I can show you the chart. This is not a mock-up one. This is the one I actually have. So there you can see the spelling of it. And so I'm really excited about this one. I did change out the fabric. So this didn't come in the kit fabric. It was like a 14 count Ada or something that came in the chart. So I changed it. So you can kind of see where I'm at. I'm, I'm doing like more like color completion with this. It's just easier to follow the symbols in that way. So if I can count um, to finish out the color, I'm doing that. So I would like to get this. This is one. So I'll kind of talk plans a little bit about like, I'm going to do a whole 2024 plans video, but I'll kind of give you an idea of what I'm, my overall plan is. I would like to finish this one next year. This is one I would like to finish next year. Okay. This one is going to be heavily modified. So this is September from, um, no, Sapphire from Northern Expression Needle, Needleworks. And I am, I'm calling it September to remember to, because I'm focusing more on the month part of it than the birthstone part of it. So this is going to be a gift for my best friend, Maddie, who uh, was wedding was back in September. September is a very important month to them. And it's when it's both of their birthdays and the month they got married. Um, so it's just in general, a very important month for them. David officiated the wedding. I was a bridesmaid and it was just an incredible weekend. So I'm changing this pretty heavily. So this is the mock-up or this is the, yeah, so this is the pattern cover. And then this is the mock-up of what I'm doing, like getting an idea of where the colors are going to go. Um, I actually put them side by side so you can kind of see that a little bit better. Um, but they, their colors were very jewel toned. So I have four Averisua colors that I am changing the colors to. So these are the four Averisua colors, which if you're interested, I can let you know what they are. And then the white is um, Almond Eminem's Orchid which is left over from my June piece that I finished this year. So those are the, gonna be the four colors that is more heavily shown. And then the beads are gonna, her main like stone, I guess that she, or jewel, jewelry that she had were pearls. So it's gonna be pearls and like white beads as the accents. So that's kind of the modification. This is how far I am, <laughs> not very far. It's on 32 count, um, raw silver. So I started in the center and I'm working on the word September <laughs> and I really need to get a move on. <laughs> this is one over one on 32 count with that almond m, &M orchid and um, I have a long way to go. So <laughs> I just started this uh, and I just, I started it. When did I start this? I started in October. I really, I want to, my dream is to give it to them next year. I need to work on it in order to. So I will say my goal, my plan is to give this to them next year at some point. I don't know. They are coming. They're, they're coming to my med school graduation in May. So that would be an opportune time to give it to them in person. But worse, no, the next best case, I should say, next best case would be giving it to them for their one year wedding anniversary. Next best case would be Christmas of next year. So I really, really want to give it to them next year at some point. <clears throat> so I need to work on it. Next one is um, one down, three across from Long Dog Samplers. This is another one that I'm heavily modifying. This is the mock-up from the designer. And then this is the mock-up of my changes. So I am also doing this on 32 count raw silver. I'm doing all of it one over one. Yes, I'm insane. I'm also changing the floss. So the white, as you can see from the mock-up, the white will still be the kind of scenes and the one down, like the, the crossword part. 
The green is DMC Etoile, $6.99, and the red is DMC uh, uh, eight, six, one of the eight teens. I don't, I don't wanna say eight sixteen a Etoile. But here's where I'm at so far. So I started in the center with friends. I'm trying to see, last time I showed it, it did um, show the sparkly of the green. But I think the, no, okay. It does sparkle in person. I don't know why it's not sparkling right now. Maybe you can kind of see that. it's there I promise <laughs> um so yeah so that is what I'm working on this I don't have any real real goals plans for this is just work on at will and no need to like finish it quickly um okay my next one uh which will soon become my travel piece once I get these other ones done this is another one of my designs this is kind fierce brave um this is this is the mock-up of it and i am doing this on 40 count wisteria from color and cotton and this is as far as i've gotten again i started in the middle i am at 18 percent done on this so this will be one that i'll focus on once i get those other two done love it This one is already available though um, on my Gumroad. The other two are not since I'm like, I so I actually released Kind Fierce Brave back on Mother's Day in May, um, kind of prematurely because I wanted to go ahead and get that out even though I hadn't had time to stitch it. So it's kind of at a discount price right now because it's not fully stitched, but once it's stitched, then it'll go on my Etsy and be a full pattern. My mom, was, my mom and I actually started that as a sal together in October uh, for my grandmother's birthday. So my mom is doing one that's slightly altered. I changed a few things for her to make it more representative of my grandmother. And I'm doing like the full um, called for model. So yes, um, I just realized I'm, so I technically missed one, but I'll show it in a few minutes cause it's gonna be, it's a two in one. So I put it in the earlier version, but. Anyway, the next one is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, one that I am also heavily modifying, as you can kind of see a theme here. This is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. This is the um, original, which is very, very gorgeous. The model at Keepsakes is what made me fall in love with it. Like, big fan. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. It's just not totally me and our aesthetic. So there are parts of it that I really did fall in love with that I wanted to emphasize more than like the full thing. This was a gift from uh, Jen at Keepsakes. I originally started on 32 count. I have changed it to 40 count and I've changed the formation of it a little bit. So, and all, and most of the colors. So this is called for an MPI silks or DMC. I'm doing them mostly in like variegated from my stash. So this is the original. This is my mock-up of what I'll be doing. And I have one in 1 1.8 blocks done. <laughs> so I have the first one done. And I'm so close to being done with the second one. All I have left on the second one are the two motifs above the sailboats and filling in that grass at the bottom, which is 600 stitches. Not a, not a small feat. But yeah, that's where I'm at so far. <clears throat> that's going to be, this is cut to size pretty much with a three inch, well, almost cut to size. Um, I don't know what happened at top where it's like all, all wonky, but yeah, so that's where, so the next one is going to be the middle one with the ship. And then I've got two left after that. My goal, I... <laughs> In a dream world, um, I would love to finish this block this year before the end of the year. And then next year do the center, which would be like two blocks, the equivalent of two blocks, um, but not as much stitching. Well, maybe it's hard to say, 
but I would like for next year to do the middle and then the following year do the last two blocks. So that way I will finish it within three years, um, which would be a miracle in a way because I started this January 1st of 2021. So it's been almost three years since I started it originally and never worked on it. I didn't work on it for two years straight. So to be able to finish this now in three years would be, would be great, big progress. I, the 32 count, it was just too, it was just too big. It was just, it was just one of those things that like, it was, I was intimidated by it for it, like the, the fabric felt like a bed sheet and it just wasn't, I just never wanted to work on it. So it's like something has to change and 40 count and above are now like is really my go-to at this point. One strand is really my, is my preference. So, all right. And then the next one, which is also my design. It's my last one. It's my last one. Um, the rest are not my design. This is a nautical flags alphabet that I am working on. This is on 40 count anthracite. Oh, this is the mock-up. You can get an idea. And then this is how far I've gotten. Um, it won't fit this whole fabric. This isn't cup size, but this is how far I am so far. I definitely want to finish this early next year. Um, I'll be working on this. I want I want to get this done. It's already lingered too long, in my opinion. So I want to, I I had a hope to get it done like by June. <laughs> so I definitely want to work on this. It's very fast. It's very easy block stitching. Um, I just need to spend time on it. I got distracted. The beauty of this and what I actually I have already stitched a version of this. And kind of what my initial thought was about it. So these are nautical flags, semaphore flags. You know that you would have uh, semaphore flags that are like on ships to indicate that you can like indicate things. Um, so I, uh, I'll put a picture here. Last year, I took the individual flags and wrote out our last name and put the year that we were married. So that is our name, Axford, 2021 in... Uh, nautical flax. So that's kind of thing. You could buy this. You don't have to stitch the sampler. I'm doing this because I think this would be cute in like a kid's room or, you know, a, a stitch room, you know, a crafty room. You know, this is kind of just like a fun, fun sampler. But if this isn't your style, but you like the idea, you could just like write out a last name. It'd be a good gift if you have a gift of someone or if you have someone who's like in the Navy or loves nautical, beachy, you know, you could do that as a gift for them. So... So yeah, so that's kind of my my vision for it. All right, and then this next one is my last 2023 whip. This is fully the fault of Laura from Stitching by the Shore. I'm blaming her for this one. <laughs> uh, this is Winter Gnome by Wonder Stitch UA on Etsy. Oh, mock-up. And where I'm at, this is on 46 count natural 46 46 count raw and this is actually my first 46 count uh time first and this is when I fell in love with 46 count no I take that back that's not right that's not right that was my first 46 count when I fell in love with it and then I continued to use it with this but what's nice about this too on 46 count these are really big um and they have a background that I'm not stitching they, this is one sixteenth cut of, no, one eighth cut. This is a one eighth cut uh, yard of fabric that like you can just get on one, two, three stitch. It's like the smallest option, like nine by 13 or something. And this will fit perfectly on it with like a two inch border. So I don't, I didn't have to cut fabric. I could get a very standard size, um, but yeah, but it will fit most of this piece of fabric. <laughs> So it's really pretty. I worked on it mostly like January, February. Haven't touched it really since. So I want to get back to it. This is one I just want to make progress on. I want to get, this is a white flower. I want to get like, I think that's where I'm going to go next and get that in. But I really enjoyed working on it. So thanks, Laura. <laughs> she's gotten a couple, she's gotten one done and she's working on another or two others. She is, she's, Got more of the series um, going and they're super cute. I bought the Christmas ones and the St. Patrick's Day ones. 
and maybe the sunflower. I can't remember. I've bought a few. Like when they go on sale, I'll buy another round because I do want to do more of the, se uh, the series. Okay, and then the next one is actually a two-in-one because um, this is a series that is all one-in-one. -one. You may have heard of it. This is the S Seasons and Stars Hollow by Black Needle Society. They're, they did, they've done three boxes so far over the last three years. The next, the last one is coming out in April, March, March or April. Um, and it's super exciting. So this is uh, the two, I finished summer and I've started both spring and autumn. Uh, spring, I started with she, um, Shelly at uh, Whips and Sips, Welcome Stitchery. So hi, Shelly. And we started this together um, October 1st. October 1st, yeah. So, because she's kept up with it amazingly and she wants to have spring done before winter comes out. I will not be that ambitious, um, especially after you've seen where I'm at on it. Uh, this is definitely just a work on it as I go. Um, obsessed with Gilmore Girls, grew up watching Gilmore Girls. So, um, so I'm super happy to have this, but yeah, this will not be done anytime soon. <laughs> so this is the spring pattern. And this is the autumn pattern. And they go in a row. So autumn was first, then it was summer, then spring, and now winter will be last. So this is where I'm at. I'm for, stitching on some 40 count Ophelia from Color and Cotton. Let me fold it in because no need to get too ambitious with it. This is where I'm at. So I finished summer this year. This is my autumn start and this is my spring start. <laughs> so long ways to go. I think it's their 90 by 90 full coverage. So you can do that math. Actually, they might be 92 by 92. They're 95 by 95. So it <laughs> just keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, they're 95 by 95. So, yep, I've got a ways to go. But they're so fun. And the colors, you get like little mini finishes. Like my goal right now is I want to finish this gazebo. You know, next time I pull it out, I want to work on the gazebo and get that done. And finish that guitar on spring you know you kind of get little mini finishes as you go so and it's fun to see how they connect the four like I'm super excited to see what they have for winter um but you can kind of see like how they all connect so so yeah so fun times all right and then <laughs> these are fun um so my next one again it's like a two-in-one these were starts for 12 by 12 last year First one is Rivendell from Country Magic Stitch. Okay, so these I'm officially entering, I guess I did with Season Stars Hollow Autumn. Uh, so spring I started this year because it came out this year. Autumn I started last year, 12 by 12 on New Year's Eve. Uh, Kia B and Pam from Just Keep Stitching. They, every um, New Year's Eve, they have like an event where you work on a different pro. well, Originally, it was you had 12 new starts on New Year's Eve and you started one each hour from noon to midnight. It's evolved as all things do. Um, so now it's you can either sit, start all new things, work on 12 whips, do whatever you want to do. It's kind of like what like mania used to be where it's like just do whatever you want. But stitch on New Year's Eve is the idea. So last year I did a combination of new starts and whips. So this is so autumn was one of the new starts. This is another one. This is Rivendell uh, for Country Magic Stitch. And I'm doing this on 22 count Hardanger. I have worked on this since last time you saw it. So there's a little bit of a, not much, but a little bit. Um, that's as far as we're at. So not, not a whole lot. We're getting there. This is at 2% done. <laughs> so full coverage, you know. I don't have any, David, David really wants these, let's be honest. He's, he and my parents are Lord of the Rings fanatics. I, uh, I enjoy, I really loved Fellowship of the Ring. I haven't seen Return of the King. I know, shameful. And I, Two Towers, I have technically seen, they say. So I, uh, yeah, I need to work on that. But they love it. David rewatches all three videos every year, or three videos, listen to me, three movies every year. My parents just did it as well. The director's 
addition there. Yeah, so this will be very valued in my home once I have them done. <laughs> So I did Rivendell and then I did, I also started with my friend Claire, who is also another Lord of the Rings fanatic. Uh, I started the Shire from Country Magic Stitch, also in 22 count Ada. And this is as far as I've gone on the Shire. She and I do Zoom catch-ups every, well, they've been less frequent, but we're gonna work on that, right, Claire? Um, whenever she and I have a Zoom catch-up, I work on the Shire, so. I don't, but we do a lot more talking than we do stitching. So I need to get better at that. But that's where all this progress has come from is working on it when I'm talking to her. I take that back. Last time I did work on something different because I had a goal that I was really trying to work on. So next year, no matter what, when she and I are chatting, I will work on the Shire. Because she and I zoomed together and started that at 12 by 12. Okay. And then was this also, no, this was just in December. So this was not 12 by 12, but I did start this last December. So it's coming up on its one year birthday. This is Hibiscus Arrangement 1 from Artisy. Stitching this on 32 count wave pool from Color and Cotton. And this is as far as I've gotten. I have loved working on this. I need to pull it back out. Oh, it's so pretty. The fabric is it's not, it's still not quite that neon, but it's, it's bright. It's a bright blue and I love it. Those plumerias that are just shining through. So I'm, next time I pull this out, I'm actually going to start the hibiscus, you know, which originally drew me to the pattern. Um, so I finally get to start those hibiscus, uh, next, you know, next time I pull it out, which will hopefully be soon. Cause I've missed it. I haven't worked on it in a while. So yeah, so as far as we've gotten on that. This is cut to size, if that gives you an idea. And also why 32 count, like this is, is this my first? Oh no, well, sort of. So the only other 32 counts I've shown you, I'm doing one over one on. So this is my first like proper 32 count that I've showed you so far. So yeah, just to give you an idea, but I, it's so pretty and like, but it's gonna be big. Um, so yeah, so. That's another thing too, like finishing and framing and everything. I think uh, Jesse Marie from Jesse Marie Does Stuff was talking about this on one of her recent videos. Like she went to go get something framed and she had done it on a big count. I don't remember exactly what it was. She's like, okay, from now on, I'm doing everything on the smallest count I can. <laughs> Cause framing, you know, the bigger it is, the more expensive it is. So there are gonna be some things where I want bigger, like my Celtic ladies, I want to stand out, but other things I'm like, you know, <laughs> this doesn't need to be that big. Okay, my next one, I started on um, the Queen's funeral last year, Queen Elizabeth II. This is a conversion I did from a needlepoint kit that I have. Um, this is a mock-up of the cross-stitch version. I got, you know, I get needlepoint things in my stash, you know, kind of thing um, that I've gotten throughout the years. So I had this, but I was like, I don't, I don't do needle points. So I'm going to do it as a cross stitch kit. Um, so I converted it. This is as far as I've gotten. I did design this crown to, so in the original kit, it was the um, red Edwards crown. I did rechart it and redesign it to be this crown. Um, the imperial crown because that that is what more represents the queen to me than other um than other crowns it's like it's also the one that was on her casket you know during the procession and everything so this is definitely more representative um and this is on 40 count raw and i did use dmc a <laughs> or dmc not a toile light effects um for the jewels and I think it turned out really well. They they weren't they weren't as much of a pain for just the few that I had. And I didn't want to buy green crinic for two stitches, you know. So um so yeah, so I've really enjoyed that. If you want this crown, this is a free, this is free on my gum road if you want that crown. And now I work on it anytime I'm watching something British, basically. So the crown, the crown has been out. Um, anytime I watch the crown, I pull this out and stitch on it. So, which, well, I say that the, when the crown came out, the part one of this last season, I was, um, out of town and watched it. And so I didn't have this with me, so I couldn't work on it. But December 14th, the second part is coming out and I will be stitching on this, um, when the second part comes out. 
And then I think in the new year, so David's not like a huge fan of it. He doesn't have anything, he doesn't have a problem with it, but he's not super, he's not an Anglophile like I am. So he's kind of like, eh, you know, um, when he is gone next month, I will, I think I'm going to restart the entire series of the crown, which I'm super excited about. So anytime I'm watching that and not doing something else, you know, if I'm, if I'm stitching and watching, I'm going to be, I'm going to work on that. So hopefully I'll make good progress on that next year. Okay. I think we're entering, nope, this is my last start of 2020, or my last whip from 2022, not last start, my last whip from 2022 that I still have and will for quite some time. Another full coverage of mine, um, here's a picture, Hammock at Sunset. I had started this in 2020 on 18 Count Ada, and I restarted it last year on 22 Count Inc. Uh, Ada, and I'm much happier with it. I've gotten a page and a half done, or page and a third done. And here's where I have worked on this since my last video. So you might see probably not much change because it's been all in that yellow. But we're, may we're getting there. We're getting there. I am considering, so I'm using DMC 310 and not Anchor Black, which I'm going to change because um, I got some Anchor Black. I think I'm going to go over these, like, oh, why is it not focusing? I'm going to go over these stitches. You can see the white fabric coming through. <clears throat> I don't like that. I like full coverage. And it's the only stitches that are like that. All of the others are so plump. And then you, I can even feel the change. Like just rubbing my hand over. All of this is DMC. Just going my hand from the orange to the black. There is an, an obvious like dip down. And my tension didn't change. You know, like it's DMC 310 really has a problem. And I'm very sad that DMC has bought Anchor and I hope that, in the sense that I hope that Anchor Black doesn't change now because like it's kind of been the saving grace. So I think I'm gonna go back over these stitches with an Anchor Black and maybe hopefully get better coverage and more like plumpness. I don't know what it is, it's so weird. So my goal on this, I, I wanna make serious progress on this next year. And this is kind of like my happy place and like brings out happiness. So I think I'm going to like every Sunday work on this. If I did the math, if I did, I think it was 280 stitches a week, I would have this done next year. Now I start residency in June, so not going to be fully feasible, but that gives me hope that like I can maybe finish in the next two years. Like the idea that this could be done in two years when I'm only done with one page is kind of exciting. It is not going to take up this entire piece of fabric. I just didn't cut it down. It's only, it's three pages across and three pages down and I'm done with page one. So, and this goes into page three. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be this whole piece of fabric. I want to say maybe it'll go to like there, maybe. So it's exciting. So that's going to be, this is going to be my focus. Like on Sundays, I'm going to work on it or try and get, you know, 100 stitches a week in on it. Now, until June, I think I can get my full my full amount. So, we'll just see cuz I also could get sick of it and then I and I don't want to do that either. So, right now that's kind of the overall plan, but excited with where that's at. All right, so now we jump to 2021 and <laughs> a lot of these are my I so 2021 was the first year I did 12 by 12. I might have been the first year of 12 by 12. I don't know if they did it in 2020. But it, it was my first year and I did 12 starts. I did a start every hour. And of course, me being me, I don't have small things. So mostly, most of my things are quite large. And I started 12 relatively large things. So I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have half of them left from that time. So here we go. And some of them I also only have worked on on 12 by 12. So they only have like two hours of work in. We'll get there, we'll get there. So this is uh, one of them. This is Woodland Wonder by Glendon Place. I have been in love with this ever since I first saw it. And I felt even more in love with it when I saw Candy, Candice, Candice um, finish hers. So hers was amazing. She showed it really well. Um, and 
it just she did a little bit of a change um which i love too i actually have her conversion written down just in case i haven't decided if i'm going to do hers or the original but i love it i am doing it on 32 count picture this plus oaken i've only worked on this on 12 by 12s this is where i'm at <laughs> oh wait now it goes this way this is where i'm at so got some work to do i have an order so the snowflakes are what's next which i'm going to do next like these are the snowflakes for like counting i'm going to do those but they call it's a strand of white and it's a strand of crinic blending filament which i don't have um so i need to go pick up from liberty hill needleworks when i go up next so that's where um, so that's where I'm going next. And so this is where I'm at right now. So I have that part of the border, like that's as far down as the border is going to go. Of course, the border up top is going to go all the way across, which I haven't done that yet, but yeah, have not worked on this since last year. Going to work on it. I do. So one of my overarching goals that I have is I do want to touch all of my patterns every year, whether it's five minutes or five days, you know, I want to just touch them. I want to get some progress in. So when I get that blending filament from uh, Liberty Hill, then um, I will pull this out and work on those snowflakes and say I've done it, you know. All right. And then my next one I have worked on since last time I saw you. Not much, but I have worked on it. This is a uh, uh, Cottage Garden Sampling Songbird Series number one. Uh, keepsakes had quite a few of these models um, and I just fell in love with them when they were coming. I think this was a 2020 or 2019. Um, doesn't it say 2018? Oh, it was a 2018 series. Oh, right. It was, that was my first year in Cincinnati. Yeah. So I fell in love with this like while, you know, my first time there. So I kitted this up pretty early and then finally started it. Um, New Year's Eve and I'm doing this on 32 count vintage stormy night from Zweigart which is a printed fabric and here's a red so last time I had it up it was just the L and the O and then I've gone in and finished the V and the E <laughs> so we at least have the word in now we can start working on the birds <laughs> um but yes, I at least have the word in. I have finished two of the others from this series and love them. So I'm excited to get these done. So next year, go work on it. You know, get more progress on it. I don't have any like specific plans for it other than just finish. I mean, I'll work on it. This next one was another 12 by 12 that I have worked on this year outside of the 12 by 12, but not very much. <laughs> um, but I have officially worked on it. So this is Madame Chantilly Autumn. I love her. I love her trays. I have almost all of them except a couple. Um, and I've done summer. I finished summer. So that's, I, uh, I'm not very far on this, but I'm doing this on 40 count mallow. And this is where I'm at. <laughs> So this is the uh, middle tier. So this year, I so I got like this done the first year of 12 by 12, this done the second year, and then uh, back in the fall, I got the squirrel and the acorn done. So next year, just gotta keep working on it. Little by little, it'll get done. This one I have worked on since last time you saw it. This is another Songbird series, number five, Bluebird, Bluebird of Happiness. I just love that cherry blossom tree so much. Just so pretty. The cherry blossom tree is really what um, drew me to it. But I did not want to do it on the pink fabric. So, because I, I really wanted the cherry blossoms to stand out. So I'm actually doing this on a 32 count picture this plus, no, 36 count. 36 count picture this plus Regency. All the called for colors for all of these. And this I've worked on since last time. I actually got good progress on this in a way since last time you saw it. it took me forever, a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, 
but here's where we're at and I've gotten the word happiness in. Oh, let me do. I gotta say stitching the word happiness did not bring me happiness though. I just for some reason could not count. So this is where we're at. The green is a very subtle green, but it is showing up. It's more than it's showing up. Um, but it's just a very light, nice green. And this is how far. So yeah, so I got the word happiness in. It took me three days of stitching to get that in. And I miscounted the H like twice. The S, like I, I had a frog. I actually was, I was doing thread chicken with my uh, coal by the end of it. Um, but it turned out really well and I'm really happy with it. And yeah, so I've got, you almost, if I didn't love the cherry blossom so much, I almost could just end it here. And just cut that out <laughs> but i want the cherry blossom tree so i will not be doing that but yeah so just got next year gonna start on that tree that's so pretty i love 36 i do two strands on 36 count that's my preference because again i love that thick plump coverage like that is my preference so that is where I'm at on that. And then next one is Celebrate 4th of July by Madame Chantilly. For those who might be new, my husband is in the Navy. He's a physician in the Navy. So we are patriotic here. And, and I love this tray. I have worked on this since, again, since the last time you saw it. Not a whole lot done on it. <laughs> this is 40 count raw. And here's a rat. <laughs> so... Last year I got USA in and this year I got the flag in. So we're making progress. <laughs> uh, I do love it. The raw is very raw. Um, it's not natural, it's raw. But I think it's looking really well. It's given that very like um, vintage, not prim, but like what they would have worked on in the olden days, you know, kind of feel. So, yep, love it. Need to work on it more next year. Um, so, yep. Yeah. And then, oh, I forgot to say for her trays, I did it for summer, but I'm not going to anymore. I'm not putting the words down at the bottom. Like, I'm just gonna, I think the tray speaks, the trays speak for themselves of what they are. And I kind of, I haven't fully finished summer yet. And I've kind of considered going and frogging out the word summer. We'll see. Um, but that's kind of my thoughts right now. This next one is, a, was a gift from my keepsakes family um, a couple of years ago. This, and yeah, we're still in 21. Okay. Um, this is Riccoli de Natale from Alessandra Adelaide. I just think it's so pretty. It is a paper chart, and this is one I wish I kind of had the PDF of because this gets, like I have to highlight this pattern. Like I haven't, I mean, I did make a working copy, but I haven't had to highlight in years and I definitely have to, to highlight that center here um, especially because i only work on this on 12 by 12s and a whole, when a whole year goes by you have no idea where you are so um so that's um i do not have this charm yet i'm hoping it's still available i need to look for it um it's so pretty but worst case i mean there's plenty of other things i'm sure i could replace that with but yep that's where we're at and i'm doing it on um 40 count Lagoon. I wonder if that's the call for. I just realized that looks a lot like the cover. And I don't know if that's what she actually stitched it on. This pattern's from 2015. What does it say? Nope, it doesn't say what the cover was stitched on. Interesting, but it looks almost exactly like it. Like I said, I'm doing it on Lagoon. I don't think this is cut to size. I hope it's not cut to size. It could be though. This is huge. Um, there it is. That's where I'm at. White stitches. You do get to see progress kind of quickly with it, but yeah. Very pretty. The white Lagoon has become one of my favorite like go-to blues 
A, it's not very expensive because it's Swigart um, and not like hand dyed. But also white shows up so good on it. Like that white just shows up so good. I'm actually restarting a new, pro I'm actually restarting a project 12 by 12 this year on Lagoon because I need white to show up. So love it. And it's just it's one of my favorite colors too. That's just a gorgeous color. So, all right, we're getting close to the end. We're getting there. This was, um, this is earlier in 2021. So we're past 12 by 12 now. This is, um, show the model or the mock-up here. This is Seasons in Lace by Jan Hicks Creates. I am still working on the winter one, which was the first one. And I'm doing this on 56 count antique white. And I am planning to do all four of them on this piece of fabric, but I have a long way to go before I even think about that. This is where I met on winter. The blues are, wait, is that the right? I always get the orientation. I have to make sure I get the orientation right. No, it's like this. Yes, there it is. Okay. Yes. It's so pretty. 56 count is actually a lot of fun to work on. The coverage is, you know, magnificent. Um, it's just gorgeous. So I will be doing all four seasons on this piece of fabric. It's still going to be huge, even on 56 count. Like this, this fabric, it's not cut to size necessarily, but it's pretty close. And that's how big it's going to be on 56 count. <laughs> so... I'm gonna have a pretty decent border. I will say It'll, there will be a pretty decent border around it of fabric, but, um, but yeah. I'm at 20, what am I at? 25%, so I'm a fourth of the way down on winter. So of course my goal is gonna be, you know, to continue working on it, kind of get more done on that. Um, I would like to keep pushing. This one's from 2021. Like I really need to be pushing to get more progress on it, so. But again, I don't have like a specific deadline or anything. It's just, I want it. <laughs> and I want to move on to the next one, you know? Like I want to move on to the next season. I am, so this is a mock-up of all four colors, all four seasons together. Or not a mock-up, this is a picture of it. Um, I will be changing Summer's color. So she did Summer in like purples. I will be changing them to greens. But more on that when I eventually get there in a thousand years. Next one is season, not seasons, uh, Madame Chantilly Celebrate Winter, which I have a picture of. I don't have the um, physical chart of. Um, it's PDF. I got a PDF of it. I started this with Evelyn from 11, Evelyn Across the Pond um, back in that February. And this is on 40 count water green from Zweigart. And this is where we're at. I just have the trade in, <laughs> which I think I finished last year. I don't think I've worked on, have I worked? Did I finish that this year? I think I may have, no, I finished the trade this year. This one has been on the back burner because I've been prioritizing another one, which I'll show you here in a second, over this one right now. But we'll get there. We'll get there. I at least have the trade on. So now I can go in. I, that's my, that's my like, uh, process when it comes to these trays I do the I start in the center and I do the tray outline and then I can go in and fill in any motif that I feel like working on you know and then I'm not I'm not stuck with just working on one tray I could jump around but like I did with USA at the 4th of July I done the USA at the bottom and then when I picked it up I was like mm, I want to work on the flag so I jumped up to the second tier and worked on the flag so that's kind of my method for these trays Case in point, the next one I have is uh, Celebrate Christmas from Madame Man Chantilly. I'm also doing this on 40 count water green. The changes I'm making to this one though, I am using a toile 816 or 815. If you're curious, I'll let you know, I've asked me. Uh, one of those, a toiles for the, all the red. And then some of the white I'm changing to DMC um, a toile white, but I've complained about in the past. The DMC, a toile white is not nearly as bright as like normal white. 
So I'm not always gonna do that. Um, Stitch and Mommy had a good recommendation that I need to go back on that video and look at again. I forgot what she had said as an alternative to to get shiny, but not DMC Etoile. I need to go back and look at what she said. But yes, not, so I'm mostly just using white at this point. I'm not using the Etoile. But I, here's where I'm at. This one is my closest trade to a finish. So next year, I would like to get this one done, to get at least one more done. <laughs> Cause I haven't finished one of these trays since 2020. Like I need to get another one done. So this is where I'm at on it. Pretty decent progress. Um, I have that middle tray completely done and the top tray will be done when that, when the uh, flowers are done on the top. And then I just have the bottom. So this is definitely the closest to finish. It's my goal. I'll come up, see if I can you see that red etoile. Yeah, so that red etoile is kind of sparkly. And then you can see it sparkling. So this cup, this mug is all of the DMC etoile. So you can see that sparkling. The snow is sparkling, but the hot, hot cocoa, that's white. So you can definitely see the brightness different, but then you can see that shimmer when I move it. So it's catch 22 right now. <laughs> like I love the shimmery, but I want it to be bright. And I did try, I did try doing the bottom. So one thing that helped with this mug, the bottom leg is DMC B5200 and then the top leg is DMC Etoile. So I did try that, it still didn't make it super bright. Um, I think it probably made it brighter because I did not do that with the snow and the snow is definitely less bright than that mug. So it definitely helped, but it did not make it as bright as I wanted. That's okay. I still love it. Rudolph with his red, shiny red nose. Yeah, that's where we're at. Two more, two more. <laughs> And then my last remaining wet from 2020. Bane of my existence in some ways. I considered, I honestly considered UFOing it, but no, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with it. Beachcomber from Carolyn Manning Designs. Started this April 30th, 2020. And started off strong, has not been so strong. Um, I'm doing this on 40 count mallet. It was the first time I tried 40 count when I originally fell in love with 40 count. Here's where I'm at. We're getting there, we're getting there. I was actually on pretty good pace to finish this quadrant this summer. I was working on it really heavily this summer and then my dog died. And I was working on it when she passed away unexpectedly, tragically, so I have not been able to pick it up since. So this piece is a little doomed. Um, I, I need to just, I need to do it. I need to pick it up. I need to work on it in a different mindset. Um, so I would have had that quadrant done if my summer had gone differently. Um, but next year, next year I'm gonna, you know, with the different, yeah. Cause my, my goal now for this piece, it's on 40 count and it's still this big. Um, my goal is I want to make this into a pillow. I think it'd be a really nice pillow to have once it's all done like that. That is a pillow that I could be really cool, um, to put on my like futon or something. So we're going to get there. It might be another 10 years, honestly, before this is done, but it will be there. And then my very last whip to show you is my oldest whip. It is from 2019, from November of 2019. And this will get done before Beachcomber gets done because I am planning to work on this quite a bit this, this uh, end of this month, Christmas. And then I'm going to keep it out throughout next year. Like I'm not just gonna wait. I've been working on it only at Christmas time, which you'll see why in a minute makes sense, but I definitely need to pull it out more if I'm actually going to finish it. And I do want to finish it. Um, this is Celtic Noel. And my grandmother bought this when it first came out, either in the late eighties, or early nineties. 
I always say this has three generations around it. So this exact pattern came, was bought originally. It's still available, but um, my grandmother bought it, didn't get around to stitching it, gave it to my mom. My mom ended up not stitching it, gave it to me. I'm going to stitch it <laughs> and I'm going to get it done. It is just so gorgeous. I have Celtic Winter up on my wall right now. It's the only lady I have finished and framed. I have finished Celtic Autumn, have not been able to get it framed yet. So this is gonna be my Celtic Noel. Um, <laughs> I really need to get the other ones done too, but this is gonna be my next one that's gonna get fully finished. This is on 28 count sage from Color and Cotton that I got at my first stitch away in 2019 that Karen so kindly fought someone for. <laughs> Not really, she, she actually fought me for it. It was funny. Um, Color and Cotton had arrived kind of late to stitch away. And so Barbara had put it out. So there was kind of like this mad dash to get there. And Karen knew I was looking for fabric for this piece. And I, um, she didn't see me come up um, behind her, but I saw the fabric and she had, she and I reached for it at the same time and I grabbed it and she like yanked it out of my hand. She's like, no, I'm taking this one. And I was like, Karen, what the heck? She's like, oh, I thought you were someone else. I was getting this for you. <laughs> like, so it was kind of a funny moment. I was like, wow, you were really gonna like fight someone for this fabric. I appreciate you, it's okay. Um, so it worked out, I got it. Um, and here we are. So I have a long way to go, of course, but I got at least her one over one skin done. <laughs> it was a big accomplishment last year or two years ago, two years ago, I got her one over one skin done. Haven't done any of the chronic or the beads yet. So her whole neckline is chronic and beads, which I am converting to petite treasure braid. I did, I got petite treasure braid gold. Oh, one maybe, uh, one of the golds, but yeah. So I'm just gonna keep working on that dress this year. I love it, so pretty. So a long way to go, of course, but what I at least remember with winter and autumn was once the dress is done, the rest of it goes so quickly. The beading, the chronic, everything. Once I get the stitching, which makes sense, obviously, it's the majority of the pattern, but still, once the stitching of the dress is done, it's, it's smooth sailing from there. So... My focus this year is gonna be getting more of that dress done. And it's on 28 count. It's one of my last, it's my only piece on 28 count that is like actually 28. So, so that's it. So that's my, it's, a, it's more green than that. That's coming across like more gray It's or dark. It is a much, <clears throat> it honestly looks like the cover photo. Like it looks more green. The lighting, the lighting's like great and horrible at the same time. I don't know. Um, can I get it? I guess that's, that's a little closer, but it's pretty. And yes, I, it is centered correctly. That's how far over her dress comes and whatnot. Like I did not uh, space that wrong. So I hope we're going to find out. Now I, I'm a center starter for this reason. So I always... Unless a pattern is not really meant to be a center start, like there's nothing in the center of the pattern or something, I usually prefer to start in the middle. Um, there's a couple I had that I had started in the corners. Honestly, they kind of stressed me out that I did that because now I'm like, I'm not sure I measured correctly. You know, like my hammock at sunset, thankfully I have so much fabric, so that doesn't matter. But some other ones, you know, it's like, I really hope I measured that right, <laughs> you know, because uh, I have I have done that to myself before. So. so that's all my whips. I have a couple of stats in a way. I, uh, you might, if you've watched me over the few, few years, um, there are a few missing. I did UFO three projects um, this time around. So I do not have Celtic Summer out anymore. I'm, so my UFOs are UFOs to restart. So my Celtic Summer, the colors just aren't right. The colors aren't right. The fabric's not right. I'm, I'm for, I'm just, I was forcing something and I haven't worked on it in over, in almost three years now. So clearly I'm not happy about it and I don't want to work on it. So 
I'm going to stop and it's no longer an active whip. I want to get a different fabric that's more sand colored right now. It's like dark gray, which I was never happy with, but it's what it's like. I custom ordered it and I paid money for it. So I was like, let's just see if it works and it's not working. And the, the, the teals aren't right. It's just not right. So I'm stopping. And when I have the brain space and the ability, you know, to really spend time on it and get what I want. Cause the whole point of that is that it's going to be like honoring our wedding. Like it's our colors. I'm going to redo her bouquet to look like my bouquet. Theoretically. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just need to be in a very different headspace for it. And I've got the rest of my life to do that. So <clears throat> that's not on the active list, whip list anymore. I did UFO Let's Talk Stitching, which I had showed. I had done it on like 40 count aqua for, um, I started that a couple of years ago for 12 by 12. And I can't see the white. I can't see the white on it. So I've UFO'd that and I'm restarting that on the lagoon because I know I can see white. So that's exciting. And then the last one I UFO'd was um, beach chairs. That was the other one, which is a dimensions kit. I started that on our honeymoon two years, two and a half years ago. And I miscounted right from the start. <laughs> so I just need to rip it all out and restart it. I'm not changing the fabric. I'm not, I'm obviously using all the kit fabric. I mean, a kit floss. I did change the fabric to a 32 count instead of a, uh, the Ada. I contemplated changing it maybe to a 40 count, but it's because of that like dimension aspect to it. I don't want to lose the back stitch or, you know, I really like the way that it looks. So I am sticking with the 32 count. It's like ice blue. It's a white guard um, that I got years ago. And then we'll be, re I didn't have, I'm not very far on it. So I'm not concerned about floss or anything. So I'm going to be restarting that. And so those are my three that I UFO to restart soon i should say restarting soon there's another one that i decided to ufo and don't tell david because he won't notice anyway but he had me he begged me begged me to start his favorite painting is starry night over the road from van gogh and there's an artisy <clears throat> pattern that is that i did on 18 count ada i got an entire page done hated it i hate it i hate working on the ada i that ada i don't know something about that ada i just i'm not a fan of i hate using two strands on full coverage not a fan of that anymore so i did ufo that and one day i will start that on a 22 count or a 28 count over one or something like that i will restart it it's not gonna be gone forever but i'm not doing it on that ada um and if he complains, I'm going to pull out the Shire or Rivendell or <laughs> I will pull out all these other things that I'm doing with him in mind. So he hasn't, he doesn't complain like that, but if he does, he's joking. Um, but he, he won't, he won't notice. So I do technically still have it over there. So if he really gives me crap, I'll be like, it's right here. It's fine. <laughs> but that, and this will be my third time starting that. Cause I originally started on a dark blue Navy fabric. That was not the way to go. And then I restarted on like this oatmeal, but I just don't want to use two strands is really what it comes down to. So, so that's, those are the UFOs that I will then one day restart. Um, my other kind of stats, I guess. So of course this will change a little bit cause it's not the end of the year. And I do have some things I want to continue to finish, but where we're at right now, I have, um, started 22 things this year and I finished 19. So it's exciting. I'm almost, you know, I'm almost one for one and I'm hoping to finish before the end of the year, finish two more things. I will be starting three. So, well, no, I'm going to start two and then I have my new year, new start. So hopefully I will like, that's where we'll like, I will be where I'm at now. Number wise. Um, I'm not as concerned about number. It's just getting because I don't want to not start things because I like do stressed about the number, but I also don't want to go buck wild. Like I'm trying to find this common ground. I am most comfortable when I have less than 30 whips. I think I will. I don't think I will be comfortable with more than 30. I think that's when I'll start. That's it officially won't fit in my box anymore. If I have more than 30 and I don't, I, I don't, I think I'll be overwhelmed with that. So right now I'm at 27. <laughs> I'm at 27 right now. <clears throat> Again, I'm hoping to have two more finish. I'll have one more finish by the end of this week. I'm hoping to have another finish. And then I'm starting two more things. So I'm hoping to end the year at 27. 
I'll immediately start the new year at 28 because I'm going to have my new year new start, but that's still only 28. It's not 30. So I'm turning 28 next year. Maybe we should keep it at 28. 28 <laughs> is a really good number. Let's just leave it at 28. Um, it's kind of weird. I haven't actually said that out loud yet that I'm turning 28 yet. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where, where things lie in that regard. Um, <clears throat> I think it's some water. I talked too much. I will do another video soon next week probably um talking about my 2024 official 2024 plans because i do have some that are different than what i talked about official 2024 plans and then i will also have a video of all of a finish parade um going through some of my own finishes like if you've watched me every year you're gonna see some of the same things but also it'll be a way to show my 22 finishes um or 19 19 finishes in like one setting um or give or take some have been gifts but you get the idea like Yes, you'll see some oldies, you know, that I have yet to get FFO'd, but then you'll see the things that I have also gotten finished this year. So that we haven't seen since the video I showed it. Uh, so that's coming up as well. So those are my two known Flossmas videos. Do you have, are there any ideas that you all have uh, for Flossmas that you love to see each year? Let me know. I did do a kit parade kind of recently and nothing's really changed there. So I maybe have kitted up a couple more things, but I'm going to hopefully be starting those soon. So not a whole lot there. Um, but yeah, if you have any other ideas that you'd be interested in to see if I, like how I organize or which isn't great, but like, if, you know, if you're just, if, tell me what you're interested in seeing and I'll do my best to accommodate. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then I'm also going to talk about my 12 by 12, which I might include in my plans because there's not a lot there. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, so let me know. Um, I did talk kind of fast this video because I'm already an hour and 40 minutes <laughs> with all of that. So feel free to slow me down if you need to on the YouTube video. Um, and then let me go back to my notes because I feel like, oh, giveaways. So those are kind of my plans. My plans are to work on models and Christmas for the rest of December. Those are my video plans. Finish Parade 2024 plans slash 12 by 12. I had a 6,000 person giveaway the last uh, video or two videos ago. Two videos ago, I've heard from half of the people. I told, I said on my last video, David, if I hadn't heard from you by this video, I'm going to call new people. So I have three new people to call. Um, so for the Black, uh, Bent Creek Black Cat, the new winner is Viper2453. So V-I-R-P-I-R-2453. All right, and then next one was the um, Country Cottage Work Needle Country Cottage Needleworks uh, Seaside Beach pattern. The new winner of that is Shannon Maddox five four three. And then the last one was the Trilogy um, pattern. The new winner of that is Donna Painter. So if the three of you will please email me your addresses, I would love to get these out to you. I cannot guarantee a time at this point, but I have the other ones I still need to ship out. I'm hoping to get those out before the end of the year. So if you could please get back to me, um, that would be great. And then my giveaway for this week, which if you've made it this far, you deserve it. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who has made it this far is I bought this this past weekend at Liberty Hill Needleworks. And the giveaway this year is a Dinky Dyes Silk Pacific Ocean, number 93. So let's see, I don't see my notes. <laughs> this is the color. So if you're, oh, it's just so gorgeous. Um, so if you are interested, and this stinky dyes silk then please use the word ocean in your comment comment down below and use the word ocean this will close my next normal floss tube which will be in early january for going over my 12 by 12 projects that i worked on so you have until early january if you see what's this floss tube i think this is 41 Yes, this is floss tube number 41. My next videos would be like floss miss something, whip parade, kip parade, whatever, whatever I do. If you see floss tube number 42, then the giveaway has closed. So, um, but yeah, but again, that won't be until early January. So 
If you're interested, use the word ocean. I think that's it guys i think we made it um again i just want to thank everyone for a if you made it this far thank you um i hope you enjoyed it i hope you saw some things that you liked if you have any questions at all please feel free to either comment down below send me an email uh comment on my instagram message me on instagram i try to keep up with that pretty well i try to be uh aware of what's going on on instagram i I need to get better about posting my actual pictures and progress. That is because I'm usually stitching at night. There's not great lighting. And then I forget the next day. It's just kind of one of those things. So I, um, I do want to get better at that, but I am on Instagram a lot. So <laughs> feel free to feel free to message me or comment. Um, and yeah, and just thank you so much for being here and all of your support. Um, my business that I started last year and kind of getting new designs out there. Um, if you have any idea for any designs, let me know because I love designing and getting inspired. And yeah, if you're going to be at Stitch Away, I'm excited to see you. Please come up to me and, you know, let's chat. Let's get to know each other. Someone did at uh, Liberty Hill Needleworks. So hi. Um, you know, it was really nice to get to know you. And it's just like, it's just a lot of fun getting to know other stitchers. So if you see me at Liberty Hill, which you probably will a lot, you know, reach out. So I think that's all she wrote. Um... And yeah, have a great holiday season. If I don't see you again on Floss Tube, you know, if you get too busy, totally understand. And have a great holiday season. Happy stitching, everyone. Bye. Uh -huh.